Okay, now let's try a more complicated one. This one says 2x minus 5 divided by x minus 4 is less than 3. Okay, now here we have a rational inequality again. And whether it's rational or polynomial, we have to be comparing to 0. In this case, we're not. So we're going to have to first do quite a little dab of algebra in order to be able to get it um, into something we can work with. So here's my original problem, less than 3. We are going to subtract 3 from both sides so that we can uh, move that 3 over. So now we have 2x minus 5 over x minus 4 minus 3 is less than 0. Well, right now it is compared to 0, so that's our first big hurdle. Our second big hurdle, though, is that we need to have this in fully factored form. We need to either be looking at things just being multiplied or um, factors or, or terms being divided. Not terms, but factors. Um, so right now we've got a division and then a subtraction. We have to be able to get those things together. So we're going to have to use a, a common denominator. Our common denominator in this case would be x minus 4. So I need to multiply the 3 by x minus 4 on top and bottom in order to get that uh, into the same fraction. Now that the denominators are the same, then we can work with the numerators. So that would be 2x minus 5 minus 3x plus 12 over x minus 4, because all I did was distribute my negative 3, is less than 0. And now we can clean this up a bit. 2x minus 3x would be negative x, and negative 5 plus 12 would be plus 7 over x minus 4 less than 0. Now we have a simplified fraction. The numerator and the denominator are fully factored. So now we can find our critical values where negative, seven, or negative x plus 7 would be equal to 0 and where x minus 4 would be equal to 0. So if I move my x over, we have 7 equals x. If we move our 4 over, we have x equals 4. So these are our critical values. Now we're using the same procedure as before where let's say here is 4 and here's 7. So we're looking at what's going on in those different areas or regions. Let's try something to the left of 4, like um, let's say 0. It's always nice. Something in between 4 and 7, like maybe a 5. And something to the right of 7, so maybe 10. Let's look at each factor. Negative x plus 7. If we were to use a 0, this would be a positive number. If we were to use a 5 for x, this would be a positive number. And if we were to use 10 for x, this would be a negative number. Now, what about the factor of x minus 4? If I used a 0, that would be a negative number. If we used a 5, it would be a positive number. And if we used a 10, it would be a positive number. Now let's look at the combination. We're looking at the negative x plus 7 divided by x minus 4. So when I divide positive and negative, we get negative. When we divide positive and positive, we get positive. And when we divide negative and positive, we get negative. Now remember, we're looking for where this is less than 0. So that would be negative numbers here and here. So our regions, or our areas, we would start at negative infinity and go all the way up to 4. Now infinity always gets a parenthesis since we're talking about um, less than and because 4 would be a hole in our denominator, so that's an asymptote there, or at least a hole in the denominator, then we would use a parenthesis because it can't be included. Join that with everything from 7 over to infinity. And again, infinity gets a parenthesis, and 7 does also because we only have less than. There is no equal here. Now you could graph that on your calculator to confirm it. 